So I have a live image here. You can plainly see that. Let me zoom out. I am zoomed out. I got a half bar though. This is an A to 5 resistor. That's a 10K resistor A to 5. Uh, soldered this earlier. I soldered this capacitor here. And also this SOT23 component, the J3Y, three legged Q1 here. It's soldered to the board. And during this, I took some before and after pictures. So we're going to go over a few of the features here. First feature is control of the camera. We have snapshot or record. So record does a very good job as far as the frame rate goes. I think it does a fairly decent job for recording to the SD. We can kind of wave some things around here. Let's grab the soldering iron. It's not on, so just pretend it's on. Wave it around, we'll have you. Let's focus in here. There we go. So we have our auto exposure. Right now it's on four. As far as our exposure target, set to auto. You can still change your target, which makes a difference. So go back to about three. Three is nice. I like three. Three looks good. You can disable auto exposure and actually change it yourself if you want to. And bring down your exposure milliseconds. I can bring that down to nine. Bring your gain up a little bit to kind of compensate. Uh, so now at this point we got a faster millisecond exposure, higher gain. I do like the auto exposure. It works really good. I'm going to go back to it. We're going to click default and reset this back down to default here. And it jumped up to nine. I usually keep it around four to three. Uh, then we have our white balance. We have our manual white balance where we can adjust our red, green, or blue. Uh, ROI white balance here, which is the square box. And you can adjust the size of the square box by using the scroll wheel on your mouse. By the way, I'm using a wireless mouse for this. So it does work good with the Logitech wireless mouse. And I prefer the global auto white balance. This seems to do a really good job. Uh, the detail is not as sharp as I like it. So down here we have our sharpness adjustment. You can see how it sharpens up the number on the silk screen. You can denoise that a little bit if there's a little bit of interference in the noise. You can adjust your saturation to bring some more color out on the PCB or even take away some color if you need be. And your gamma you can adjust here as well. Now we're looking really close to what I see with my eye and contrast adjustment. So some really good features that are included. Snap is for taking a picture, record is to record so you can actually record a video of whatever it is you're doing. Go back to record and it stops and it tells you that it captured a frame while it's recording. There's a little counter down here on the right hand corner. Gives you the seconds of how long it's been recording. And then record stop. And then we can move on to some of the other features. Now I do have different modes on my light, and this is no light. Turn my LED back on since I accidentally hit off. I can change four different quadrants on the modes of my LEDs, so that's why you see different reflective materials, you know, in, in different portrays of reflections. Um, so you can change the settings to compensate, you know, depending on your lighting, basically. Uh, and then we also do have our power frequency in Hertz DC 50 or 60. This is for anti-flickering. Down at the bottom, we have our digital zoom, which surprisingly, I would usually never say this, but the digital zoom does seem to work pretty good. I was very surprised. In fact, if you want to see where I'm zooming, you can turn on the crosshair, and this will point out exactly where I'm zooming here. And you have a crosshair in two different colors, red or green. You can also freeze the image unfreeze the image. Now you can digital zoom, but because you're using digital zoom, I can optically zoom too, and then refocus a little bit and use some optical and digital combination. Actually looks pretty good. Much better than I expected. Now of course, the slightest touch on the table causes any kind of vibration. This is where freeze would come in handy while you're inspecting the object under the microscope looking through the eyepieces and you can do a before and after shot if you make any changes there um, 
we have our, well, let's get out of the zoom and back this back out. There we go. So we have our horizontal mirroring, our vertical mirroring, and our picture compare. To do a simple image compare, let me show you here. We'll take a snapshot of this, it says JPEG record it, and then we'll take a snapshot of me with the tweezers on the, the resistor. There you go. Then we can go down to compare image, and we'll look at the one with the tweezers on it, and you can see we have a perfect comparison, and you can scroll the live view as well as scroll the picture that you took for the comparison. So you can bring them right next to each other if you wanted to, which actually works out very good for comparisons. a nice little feature. So comparison is a very nice feature. I, I like the comparison part. Um, we can either click compare again to choose a different picture to compare to, let's say this one, or we can actually choose a picture here to compare it with. Of course, we're zoomed in at a different level there, so we can take our live image and bring that to the same size. Or we can just, says division cancel. So division cancel is to get out of the compare mode. This is division, dividing your screen into two, and that gets you out. You can go to your browser, and in your browser, you can look at the images individually. You can scroll one image to the next. If you run across the video, you'll know it's a video because the little play button will show up and you can hit play. The little counter over here shows you that it's playing. How many seconds in? You have a pause and a stop. And this also says AVI, so this is actually me soldering the J3Y component onto the Q1 position on the PCB. You can see I'm laying the flux down here, prepping the surface area to solder that component into place. You can hit stop, hit home, takes you back to the main selections. You can delete an image individually. Let's say delete this one. I didn't like that one. Didn't come out as good as I thought it would. Or you can click delete and select the ones that you want to delete and just go through and click on the ones that you don't want to keep and then it deletes all the ones that have the check marks in the boxes in the top right hand corner and there it goes cleans them all up loads a whole new page and click home again here to return back to the live main screen and you can see I'm back on the live main screen so it all records onto the SD card. This is actually being controlled with a Logitech wireless mouse. That seems to be working really good. In fact, I can prove to you it's being controlled by this Logitech wireless mouse. We'll go to the ROI white balance. The ROI white balance, there it is. We can drag the box around and it control the size of the box. You can use the scroll wheel to control the size of the that you want the white balance to be captured within and even drag that around as well but as I said my preference is global
So I hope you enjoyed this little on-screen display feature review of the TubeTech HD 1080p camera. And if you liked it, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And subscribe to the channel for more videos coming up in the future. And any questions, feel free to leave the comments down below. Thanks for watching.